Good day, everyone. Last time we had differentiated vertebrates and invertebrates in our lesson. But this time, we will be identifying more about the characteristics of invertebrates. As a review, we say that invertebrate animals have no inner skeleton or backbone. Their size may be small, but some are enormous, just like the giant squid. In terms of their body covering, some invertebrate bodies are protected by shells or exoskeletons, but others do not have covering. In terms of their body shape, most invertebrates are symmetrical, meaning it can be bilateral, two identical halves or planes, radial symmetry, several planes of symmetry, or it can be asymmetry, the body has no symmetry, or we call it irregular shape. Where and how invertebrates live? Many invertebrates live in the sea. Some live in fresh water and others on land. More vertebrate, invertebrates can move. However, some don't move. They attach themselves to the rocks or the seafloor so that they can survive, but others live inside of other animals or the parasites, or it can be harm harmful to these animals. Most invertebrates are oviparous, meaning they came from eggs. Sponges. They have irregular bodies and no symmetry. They cannot move around. They attach themselves to rocks or the seafloor. And using these uh, rocks or the seafloor, they filter the seawater so that they can retain the nutritive substances as used as their food. Cnidarians. For the Cnidarians, they have jelly-like bodies with radial symmetry. They have also tentacles. They are marine animals. Some, like the coral and sea anemone, attach themselves to rocks and getting the nutritive substances from it used to be used as food. Others, such as jellyfish, can move around. We have also here the worms, flatworms, roundworms, and segmented worms. For the worms, they have soft bodies with bilateral symmetry. Some are cylindrical, but others are flat. Some worms are aquatic and others are terrestrial. Many are parasites. Echinoderms. For the echinoderms, they have five-way symmetry. They have a skeleton made up of hard plates, often with spines. They are covered by a thin skin and they are all marine animals. We have also here mollusks. Mollusks have a soft body with bilateral symmetry. Many are covered with one or two shells. Arthropods. For the arthropods, their bodies are totally covered by an articulated exoskeleton, just like there are more. Some are aquatic and some others are terrestrial. The characteristics of the arthropods, there is exoskeleton is like a human skeleton. It protects the body, but it is external. The exoskeleton is rigid, so from time to time, the arthropods molts or changes their skin and grows a new one. Why is this happening? Because these arthropods are growing also. So when the time that they grow, they break or changes their skin, and then another skin will grow to protect them. This process is called molting. Arthropods, since organs are well developed, develop. they have antennae and eyes. Antennae. The eyes can be simple or a compound. They have also compound eyes, which is made up of thousands of smaller, simple eyes. Insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods are examples of arthropods. So we have here insects. You can, can you see that insect flashing into your screen? 
They are the most numer numerous animal group. An insect body is divided into three parts, the head, the thorax, and abdomen. The head has a mouth, this one, two eyes and two antennae. The, two, the thorax has six legs. So these insects have six legs. Many insects have wings on their thorax. Insects can live everywhere except the open sea. They eat many different types of food. Some insects like bees or silkworms produce substances which are useful for people, but there are these harmful insects that can cause illness, that can destroy crops or spoil our food. We have also here the arachnids. These arthropods have eight legs. An arthropod body is made up of two parts, the abdomen and the cephalothorax. Examples of these arachnids are scorpions and spiders. Most are terrestrial and some are car carnivorous. They hunt and eat other animals. Another type of arthropods are the crustaceans. Most crustaceans are aquatic. Many have 10 legs two pairs of antennae and compound eyes. The body is made up of two parts, the abdomen and the cephalothorax. Many crustaceans are used for foods just like the lobster, shrimp, and crabs, where we can see and eat them in seafood restaurants. Another is the myriopods. These arthropods have long bodies made up of many identical segments that whenever you cut it, it can still move. Each segment has one or two pairs of legs and one example of this one is a centipede but their head has two short antennae. So why is it centipede? Because it has hundreds of feet. They have also, uh, we have also here a mollusks. They have soft bodies protected by one or more shells most mollusks are aquatic, but a few live on land. These are three principal groups of mollusks, the gastropods, bivalves, and cephalopods. The gastropods have a head with four tentacles where the sense organs are located. They have one foot to move. Marine gastropods eat algae, but most terrestrial gastropods are herbivores. Most gastropods have one spiral shell, which protects their internal organs. Some, however, have no shell just like the slugs. Bivalves have a shell made up of two articulated valves. The valves can open and close. Bivalves have a soft body, but there is no head. Some bivalves, like the mussels, attach themselves to rocks on the ocean, Others, like the oysters, move around. They obtain their food by filtering salt water and retaining the nutritive substances on them. Lastly is the cephalopods. Cephalopods have a well-developed brain and they have also eight or ten tentacles. All cephalopods are marine. They move their body by expelling water to go from one place to another. Some of them have a very small internal skeleton, what we call, is this what we call cartilage. Cephalopods are carnivorous. They capture their prey with their tentacles. So that's it. Uh, we had already identified the different characteristics of invertebrates using their body shape, how they live, um, how they survive in their habitat, um, their different unique characteristic that is different from the other invertebrates. So this time, it is the time to answer your modules, the activities given by your teacher. So good luck and I hope that you enjoy your modules for this week. Goodbye.